Well, hello, welcome back to another edition of Electric Avenue's YouTube updates. Thanks for joining me on this post Memorial Day release day. Uh, release date is uh, May 31st, 2024. We're on the cusp of uh, a June, June release schedule. And uh, so I have a lot of uh, things to show today. This is a sort of a mid-size week. Um, usually that happens around the holidays. I think I've mentioned that before. And uh, yeah, so um, let me just jump in with the new releases. And then uh, I don't have a recommend today, but I do have some things I'm going to discuss at the end uh, on a different note. Um, the first thing, I think the biggest thing of the week uh, is this sort of tome, Black Sabbath, Anno Domini, uh, 1989 to 1995. So this is the post Ozzy, post Dio era, um, and not really as well known, uh, features the album's Headless Cross, uh, tear, cross purposes, and forbidden. So I think it's tear. Maybe it's tire. I never really got that. Um, but these were uh, with the vocalist uh, Tony Martin. Uh, so different singer. And these were uh, very short lived and are very hard to find. Uh, they didn't make a lot, they didn't sell that much. And so I think that people who are Sabbath fans. You might really be interested in picking this up. Uh, it's a four LP super deluxe edition featuring three albums newly remastered and a 2024 Tony Iommi remix of Forbidden, 1989 Headless Cross tour replica concert book, and 40 page book with photos, artwork, and liner notes, and a Headless Cross poster. It's a pretty good uh, value for about a hundred bucks. So, um, and I think Sabbath has been treating their fans pretty well when it comes to these sets. There's also a CD version of that, which is a nice box too. Uh, you get this with the four, four albums in there and this runs about 60. So nice. Uh, all right. Let's see. What else do I have here? Uh, okay. Uh, this actually was a thing that came out on record store day um as a limited thing and then now it's out on uh black final i believe is uh ringo stars crooked boy and this is the ep that he just did with linda perry uh famous for four non blondes and writing beautiful with uh, or for christina aguilera it's got four tracks on there um she and he just had a appearance out at amoeba records in california los angeles um, nice to see these guys back again, I, I, yet again, Crowded House, Neil Finn and company, and, uh, this is their new album, Gravity Stars, um, or is it Gravity Stairs? Sorry, Gravity Stairs. I didn't know what it was called. <laughs> Standard vinyl, and I get, it's hard to read the way they have it sort of written here. This cover is very reminiscent of, uh, Revolver. If you look at it, it's sort of like, I think that's intentional. It's like a crowded house doing, we're doing our own revolver cover here. Very beetle looking. Um, some kind of funny poses there on the back. Um, let's see, this features, uh, this is a standard vinyl. Um, I don't know if there's a, I don't remember seeing a del or color version of this, but there might be somewhere else. Uh, Magic Piano, Life Simitation, The Howl. All that I can ever own, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I wonder which who produced this. Uh, Mitchell Froom plays keyboards on it. So uh, it says produced by Crowded House and Stephen Schram, though. So uh, I guess Mitchell is a contributing musician to it now. Uh, okay, and another new release this week Willie Nelson. Keeps cranking him out. He's what, 90, 91, something like that. Uh, Willie's new studio album featuring 10 new classics, including The Border, Made in Texas, and How Much Does It Cost, produced by Buddy Cannon. Uh, so, 
Nice cover. No picture of Willie on it, though. <laughs> Uh, this artist I'm really fond of, and I'm I'm glad to see that she has come back. She's uh, her last record was a little bit um, sort of uh, off her normal stuff, and uh, Bat for Lashes returns with the dance, uh, the dream of Delphi, and uh, it's a very Kate Bushy looking cover here, and a lot of her music kind of usually sits in that very mystical kind of stuff. It's uh, Natasha Khan, um, Pakistani British uh, woman. And um, yeah, her last record, she went to Los Angeles, uh, I think it was right before COVID happened, and wanted to uh, write a screenplay for like a modern uh, teenage vampire type movie. And the, it was going to be just soundtrack music. And then the movie didn't happen and they took the music and turned it into her last album. So it was kind of a 80s influence, like pop, synth pop record. This I think is a little more like her normal stuff, which is a little more acoustic based and uh, yeah, a little bit more Kate Bush kind of sounding. So you know if there's songs called The Midwives Have Left, um, yeah. But it's, I think it's obviously sort of related to um, giving birth or something. There's Christmas Day, Letter to My Daughter, At Your Feet, something about raising a child or something. Um, okay, The Marias, this is their uh, new record called Submarine. This is the iridescent blue vinyl. Uh, I've had a lot of requests for this. Uh, so I think it's going to do well. And uh, I don't know much about them, but I'm, I'm going to find out for sure. Um, let's see, we also have a new Maya Hawk. And Maya is uh, Ethan and uh, Uma Thurman's daughter. Uh, she was on the show Stranger Things. This is her third studio album featuring Missing Out uh, includes a poster insert. It's called Chaos Angel. Kind of a cool cover there. Uh, I've heard some of her stuff. She's pretty good. Uh, I don't think she's just cashing in on her parents' notoriety. Lucius, Wild Woman, The New Recordings. Um, I believe that Lucius had an album called Wild Woman before. And this one uh, must be just a new version of it. Uh, let's see. This actually features guest appearances from... Marcus Mumford, Devin Gilfillian, and Brandy Carlisle. Uh, Lucius has done a lot of backup singing for, uh, I don't know if they're sisters, I think they are, not sure here, but, uh, but they have very kind of similar type vocal stylings and they've backed up like Joni Mitchell and recently uh, people like that. So anyway. Um, okay, and then we've got some reissues, too, uh, on vinyl. Uh, R.E.M., Fables of the Reconstruction, or is it Reconstruction of the Fables? I'm, I'm not sure. I think it's always been sort of however you want it to be, but Fables of the Reconstruction is sort of the way that it's normally accepted as, like, the common way of being called. This featured uh, Can't Get There From Here, which was kind of a college radio hit for them. Um, it's the album that I think is probably one of the more, most difficult to get. Uh, I haven't seen this in a long time. It hasn't been reissued in, I don't know if it's ever been reissued. Uh, so yeah, that's cool that IRS and Capitol have done this. Hopefully they'll do it with uh, the album, uh, the one that followed this, I think the one with Superman. Uh, but anyway, it's a great era of REM, early REM, the IRS stuff. It should be out there all the time. Why is this stuff so difficult to get? The record companies kind of don't get it. Uh, they're going to get to the point where people maybe lose interest or we all start getting too old that the people that really loved it then aren't going to want it anymore. But, uh, yeah, well, uh, good stuff. Uh, Blackfield. And this is a reissue of, I believe, Blackfield 1, the first one. 
Yep, the debut album from the acclaimed duo of Stephen Wilson and Aviv Geffen. And this is a limited edition 20th anniversary on marbled vinyl. And this says hypnotically effective. Four stars from Classic Rock. This is reissued on K-Scope, which is Stephen's own label. Um, it's cool to see this. I wish that they'd done a little more with the cover. It's a little, like... You know, it is what it is. I'm sure it sounds good. K-Scope is like, they wouldn't just give their stuff out to anybody to do. Um, all right. And everybody knows that Stephen Wilson's a big deal now, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't think I need to explain that, but, you know, sometimes people are new to these videos and they're like, oh, I didn't realize that he was, like, remastering all these old albums for other people. Uh, King Crimson, XTC, you know, a lot of people. Uh, Joan Chat and the Blackhearts. And this is a Greatest Hits album. There have been other Greatest Hits albums for Joan Chat and the Blackhearts. And uh, so it's kind of cool that this one is a little bit sort of like, I wouldn't say it's bare bones, but it's got basically everything that you would really want if you're kind of just a sort of a casual fan. This album has Bad Reputation. Cherry Bomb, I Love Rock and Roll, Crimson and Clover, Do You Want to Touch Me, Everyday People, Fake Friends, I Hate Myself for Loving You, Light of Day, Love is All Around, Any Weather, and Fresh Start. So not bad. Uh, it's uh, 23 bucks too, so very reasonable. Uh, let's see, Cindy Lauper, pretty reasonable collection here. This is let the canary sing and it's a um, career spanning collection featuring 13 iconic tracks there are songs basically that go along with there's going to be some sort of documentary about her and uh it sort of goes along with that that's a great shot there um this features kind of an interesting track listing it's i'm gonna be strong money changes everything the live version Time After Time, Who Let In The Rain, I Drove All Night, and Into The Nightlife, which is a great club song she did about 20 years ago that you can't get on vinyl, really. Uh, and then Side 2, Sisters of Avalon, that one's very hard to find also. Uh, Girls Just Want To Have Fun, The Goonies Are Good Enough, She Bop, Early In The Morning with Alan Toussaint and B.B. King. Uh, at last from her standards album her version of that and uh, true colors and some of these say they're the let the canary sing edits so i don't know what that means uh, i haven't heard this so i don't know if they blend into each other or what and the only song i felt that was missing from this really was all through the night um, which i guess you can get if you really want it you just buy um, the first the debut album uh, with Girls Just Want to Have Fun. Uh, she's so unusual. So anyway, that's cool that Cindy gets a little bit of reissue action this week. Some people might want this, Damn Yankees. Uh, this was kind of a popular uh, merging of different artists. Um, what was it? Jack Blades, I believe, from... Uh, was it Jack? From Night Ranger. Uh, Ted Nugent. Uh... Tommy Shaw. I forget who the fourth person was, right? Um, oh, good. I got three of the four right. Michael Cardalone. I'm sure I know who that is. But uh, anyway, this is the uh, album with High Enough. That was a pretty big hit for them. Uh, you can tell it was basically a kind of a Tommy and... Uh, I'd say Tommy and Jack sort of did most of the writing on this. And then the other guys sort of played but yes i know it has ted nugent <laughs> so no comment um anyway popular record i remember when this came out uh this is this will date me when it came out i was working in a store and the guys i worked with played this album non-stop like they that was pre-pearl jam i think right maybe 90 i think it's earlier oh it's 90 so yeah uh at least pre the debut album okay a couple more reissues here to show uh this looks awesome this is a john lee hooker uh right 
and this is 1977 live soulful engaging essential and it's called the cream and it's got uh, two different colors of vinyl there uh, one is uh, translucent cherry red and the other is opaque cream to mimic his uh, his Sunday there uh, this is a double album uh, so you get four sides and this was like I said 1977 starts with hey hey rock steady Tupelo you know it ain't right uh, she's gone TV sheets sugar mama one room country shack Drugstore Woman, I Want You to Roll With Me, Barroom Drinking Little Girl, Louise, When I when My First Wife Left Me, and Boogie On. Uh, it was originally released on Tomato Records in 1978, so pretty cool. Another person that got a reissue this week that doesn't get many reissues, Jaco Pistorius, and this is his album Invitation. This is a music on vinyl reissue limited to a thousand individually numbered copies on red colored vinyl uh, and this is from uh, oh, this is number 211 1983 uh, let's see Paul McCandless plays tenor sax oboe Elmer Brown oh let's see who are the big names here Randy Brecker on trumpet Bob Mincer on tenor and soprano sax uh, sort of a hodgepodge of people there. A lot of different players. But Jocko is an incredible bass player. And if you like Joni Mitchell and you like Hajira, you have Jocko to thank because he's the one playing fretless bass on most of that album. I think it's fretless. I don't know. I'm not a bass player. Uh, Willie Nelson. And this is his uh, reissue of his album, The World's Don't F The Words Don't Fit the Picture. Uh, this is also a music on vinyl reissue and limited edition of 1500 individually numbered copies on translucent blue colored vinyl features good hearted woman and uh, also stay away from lonely places uh, young Willie at least young compared to him now right this is he's probably like in his 40s here uh, what year was this? 1972. So 50, 52 years ago. Oh, yeah, he would have been in his 40s. <laughs> and, uh, okay, one more vinyl here. Uh, Lee Perry. And this is Arc in Dub. And this is another Culture Factory reissue. Sort of like the uh, John Lee Hooker. This is on translucent silver vinyl. One pressing worldwide. Uh, this vinyl has been out of print and unavailable until now. I mean, Lee Perry, his the covers are such cool the artwork. Uh, and this uh, features mm, Carlton Bennett, Jr. Mervyn on guitar. Mervyn. Uh, Winston Wright, Ansel Collins. Yeah. Oh. I mean, Lee's stuff is so influential in the sort of reggae dub world. Um, so anyway, that's very cool. Uh, some CDs I have to show, and some of these are available on vinyl too, or will be coming. Um, Andra Day, her new album, Cassandra. What a great voice she has, and uh, she's done some some acting as well. So uh, anyway, Andra Day, new Big Head Todd and the Monsters, and this is uh, what's this called? The Way Out, I think. Uh, I think there's a vinyl of this coming, but they didn't have it yet. Uh, but yeah, still doing it. This is like uh, 10 songs, I think. Uh, the woman who was like up for Best New Artist a year, a couple of years ago, Aruj Avtab, and sort of jazzy, um, but Middle Eastern Pakistani, I think, also. Um, yeah, so this is her new record, CD. Uh, let's see. She And it looks like there's kind of a mix of the Eastern and then some English or standards. So um, she has a very beautiful voice. Uh, let's see. The new Ben Platt, Honeymind. 
um, Ben, uh, can't remember, he's Broadway stalwart. <laughs> At this point, he's very popular on Broadway. And uh, this album was a sort of a love letter from him to his uh, husband or boyfriend. I don't know if they're married, but uh, featuring Brandy Clark on one song. Uh, he's got a great voice. Swamp Dog. If you like the blues, uh, this is Black Grass from West Virginia to 125th Street. Um, not to be confused with his other album, I Need More Auto, I Need More Money So I Can Buy More Auto Tune. <laughs> so anyway, this one uh, features the song Mess Under That Dress, Ugly Man's Wife, Curtains on the Window, Have a Good Time to the Other Woman featuring Margot Price. Songs to Sing, Count the Days, featuring Jenny Lewis. Uh, Gotta Have My Baby Back, Your Best Friend. This Is My Dream, Rise Up, featuring B Vernon Reed and Murder Ballad. So, very interesting record from Swamp Dog. Uh, I think that's coming on vinyl soon, too. Uh, Long Distance Love, this is a um, sweet relief tribute to Lowell George. And uh, so there's a good picture of Lowell on the back. And this features um, Elvis Costello, uh, Bedouin, uh, Lady Blackbird, Madison Cunningham, Ben Harper, uh, Jack Shit, Dave Alvin, Sugar Ray Rayford, Inara George, Jonathan Wilson, Bird and the Bee. Uh, obviously, you're going to have Inara George and Bird and the Bee on there since she was... Lowell's daughter. Um, let's see. The Other Two and You. This is a different sort of cover for this album. Uh, it's the reissue of their album from 25, 30 years ago. Maybe it's 30. It's been a long time. It's Julian Gilbert and Stephen Morris of New Order. They're the married couple in the band. And uh, this was their their record together uh just reissued and a couple of reissues from howard jones humans lib and dream into action these are like a mix of blu-ray audio and uh and a new cd new 2024 stereo mixes so uh, if you're interested let me know i won't have a lot of these hanging around but uh interesting those are good records so uh, probably his two most most popular i mean uh this one had new song and uh what is love were two top top 40 hits in the u.s maybe top 30 and uh dream into action was kind of a bigger success sales wise it had things can only get better which i think was a top 10 hit no One Is to Blame, that was also a top 10 hit. Uh, and Like to Get to Know You Well was also uh, a top maybe 30 or 40 hit. And uh, the Look Mama was also a hit. And Life in One Day was a single, so had a lot of singles. Uh, he was on fire in that era. All right, so uh, that's pretty much the new releases of this week that I wanted to show or had to show. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, prices because... There's been a lot of talk and you know about oh uh, targets lowering prices on five thousand rec uh, five thousand record five thousand items um, and now Walgreens is lowering prices and people will say like well what do you see going on in the record business um, right now I would say it's sort of a mixed bag uh, things went kind of crazy last year when we sort of went into the uh, supply chain shortages. Actually, that was like two years ago. Um, and sort of that has all kind of leveled off. I don't really see the massive uh, spiking of prices the way that I did when all of that was happening. It's pretty much plateaued. Some things have come down, um, but like so, for instance, um, things like Taylor Swift, like the new one, are still in the 40, $45 to $50 range. A double album on color vinyl for an artist that's considered 
A plus grade or whatever. Uh, and it's on Universal, uh, which they tend to be the biggest offender. But, you know, Sony and Warner have some high price stuff, too. Um, but, you know, those things are still premium. But, you know, this, uh, the Bowie a Diamond Dogs reissue. This is a half speed master. It's in the U.S. It's uh, $28 about is what I have it for. In the U.K., if you were to buy this comparable, uh, it would be probably more like $40. Uh, and then if you were buying the picture disc, which is also the same price here in the U.S., in the U.K., it's $45 to $50. So, uh, you know, we're actually not as bad off as uh, people like to paint the American economy of pricing and stuff. Cage the Elephant's latest, Neon Pill. What a great cover. And uh, color vinyl, $26. Um, popular with kids uh, and a good record. That's new. So look, it can be done. Lemon Twig. Now that was a gatefold. Lemon Twig's new record. Uh, this is a single record without a gatefold. Very popular. Color vinyl, uh, $24. Uh, I think it depends on the manufacturer. These are, let's see, the KG Elephant was RCA, so that's kind of uh, like BMG related. But uh, Lemon Twigs, uh, I think that, and the Camera Obscura, these are more like Warner kind of based indie type offshoots. This is Merge. Uh, Merge Records, uh, $26 for the color vinyl pressing of the new Camera Obscura album. Um, like last fall, Sufjan Stevens. This was quite a package. I mean, you got color vinyl, you got like a, a really big booklet in here, and a uh, 48-page book, $26. I mean, so it kind of depends on what you're looking for, but... The new Black Crows album, uh, $28, and it's a gatefold. Um, maybe it's not the greatest sort of artwork, but still, I mean, the record itself was not that expensive. <clears throat> so, alternately, um, take a band like The Smiths, or some, some of these uh, bands that maybe are, I would say, legacy bands, um, New Order, The Cure. Some of those, what was happening during the pandemic was that the records were really getting expensive because we were not able to get American pressed copies of them. The only copies we could get were basically the imports that they were still making in Europe and then sending them over. So like an album like this, Hat Full of Hollow, the Smiths, this features How Soon Is Now. Uh, this album was up to like almost $45 during the pandemic. Uh, they started pressing these again in the U.S. And this is $28 now. So that's like a big, you know. And if you've, if you've been watching the prices, I think you'll do a lot better now than you would have done like a year ago, maybe. Black Sabbath's Paranoid. This is another one that we had only had imports for a while, and they were $45, and this is $29. So um, even something like Pink Floyd, which is, those were Warner and Rhino type stuff. This is uh, Sony, Columbia, uh, I think, right? Well, it's Pink Floyd, Parlophone, I guess. But anyway, so... Uh, which Parlophone, I think, is Warner. But this is only $30. For a while, it was it was about $40 also. We were only able to get imports, and so now it's back in the U.S. Now, there are some things that are still a little high, and uh, you just have to be like, I wouldn't say be careful or whatever, but, you know, you're just going to have to accept that as, like, we have no control over that. So, uh if we're buying stuff because we think that our customers want it and it just so happens that they're making it in Europe and it's part of the European company or Universal, uh, whoever, a lot of times will just sort of raise the prices on certain things because 
they know that they're actually like very desirable. So uh, Tears for Fears, Songs from the Big Chair. This is a $35 record. Now it's a single record. It's not a gatefold. Um, it is made in Germany. So it's, you know, probably pressed very well. Um, and it will sound good. Uh, and it's the right pressing because they did, I think I've mentioned this before, they did remaster this at one point and they fixed the the uh, channels were switched originally, so it's uh, it's correct. But um, you know, thirty five is getting a, a little bit higher, maybe. Um, what sort of gets me are things like this, which is the new Marcus King album. Uh, this is on uh, I think Republic, American Republic. So this is sort of um, Universal, I believe. Uh, this is on indie exclusive neon orange vinyl and it's $40. Now it's, it is a gatefold and it's a color vinyl. Does it need to be $40? I mean, I know that Marcus is like popular, but he's still kind of a developing artist in a way. So I'm not sure what the point is. And sometimes I think they do this so that people won't buy so many copies of the record. Casey Musgraves latest. I mean, she was very popular on Golden Hour, and then the last record was kind of a bomb sales-wise, and we ended up getting a lot and then marking a lot of them down. So we were a little more cautious when this one came out, and it's it's a $40 record. Now, Okay, it's the indie exclusive spilled milk vinyl and it comes with boy smells, all right? And it is a good album. I play it a lot in the store. Uh, I don't know if it needs to be $40, but, you know, again, I think she's kind of popular again. So maybe they, they're, they were hedging their bets and said, well, this album's going to be popular. So, but that's a single record. Now, this one's a double. Vampire Weekend's latest. It's also $40. Uh, the other Vampire Records or Vampire Weekend records tend to be under $30, uh, except for maybe Father of the Bride, which was also a double. So why is this one so much more? I mean, honestly, they probably could have pressed this on one record and saved about $10 for the consumer, but I think that they were trying to give you a really good sounding record uh, and it's uh, the indie exclusive cover edition. There's nothing different as far as the pressing or the, I don't think it's color vinyl. But uh, sometimes the choices that they make, I'm like, you know, I know you want it to sound good. The album is not particularly long, so it means you have to flip it more often. Uh, so anyway, I think it's a mixed bag is what I'm sort of getting at here. So don't go at it now and say like, oh my gosh, the prices of records are out of control or so high. Some are, especially like vintage records that are, you know, first pressings in good condition of certain albums, uh, you know, Robert Ludwig pressings of Led Zeppelin II, stuff like that are going to be crazy. $500 or whatever, you know, uh, because they're collectible. But uh, anyway, I'm just basically trying to say, like, I think it's sort of moderating a little bit. So I want you all to kind of have a little bit of optimism on this because uh, it's good to see that. Now, on the other flip side, you know, the new Pearl Jam record was $50 and that was a single record and is beautiful colored vinyl for a lot of it. But, uh, yeah, you know, it gets up there. So uh, anyway, that's sort of my my. Uh, sort of talk on that. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Rolling Stone, or not Rolling Stone, um, Apple Music and their uh, top 100 list. Uh, they just issued a list of the top 100 records of all time. And um, I, while I don't agree with the choice that was number one, I can understand why it was there, but uh, I would have probably put it a little bit lower. Um, I may have some personal bias about that which I'm not going to really talk about in the video, but uh, I will say this. Um, I'm going to try and come up with my own list of what I think are, uh, and, you know, maybe, it, maybe it'll end up being too much of my own bias, uh, and I won't do 100, but I'll come up with maybe like my top 
10 or 20 and talk about them here just so uh, you guys have kind of a feel for what other people are listening to also and what somebody who I know that I'm not the, the end-all be-all of uh, you know saying like hey you gotta listen to what I would never say that like you gotta listen to what I listen to I just think it's interesting to share what my thoughts are and you guys can share some of yours too and uh, see what you know on a more personal level what we think the best records of all time are uh, because it's very easy to kind of just say like, oh yeah, you know, uh, Thriller, that's the best album of all time. Because you hear everybody say it over and over and over again. It kind of becomes like second nature. And uh, it's really, I don't think it's that simple. I think you need to kind of sometimes search a little bit more. I was kind of uh, slightly unimpressed with the fact that I think that most everything on the list, uh, most things except for maybe Burial, um, are very pop kind of rec or records that have sold a fair amount. Um, sometimes they'll pick like the popular choice. And one thing I found fascinating was that they did not choose this album, Radioheads and Rainbows, which I think is probably one of their best albums. Uh, I probably would have flipped that with Kid A on the list. But uh, anyway... Uh, not that Kid A is bad by any means, but they only put two on the list, which were that and OK Computer. So maybe they needed to, I don't know, go look at the Apple Music Top 100 list and ask yourself, why is the Velvet Underground way down at number 60? It just It's almost like a list to, that's trying to be too hip. And Apple Music is usually not so concerned with that. So anyway. I'll talk about that more in the future. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, I know this video is starting to run a little bit long. See you guys again next week. Have a wonderful weekend, the end of the holiday week, and uh, take care. I'll see you next time. Peace. Have fun. Be well.